to the podcast, Falcon. Merry Christmas and all that. Thank you so much. It is Christmas very soon, isn't it? Mm, like four days away now. It's coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Had all my Christmas shopping done since around December the 1st, so... Excellent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I had all my Christmas shopping done mid-October. Wow, way to go. Yeah. Yeah. That should be my, my goal for next year. Let's go. Well, mine was really easy. I'm just like, I, I basically only do Christmas presents for my nieces and nephew. So I built them a computer. Ah, that's a good present. It's yeah. a really good present. Yeah. yeah. What'd you give them? What GPU? Uh, a GPU? My old 1080. Um, nice. Yeah. So, oh, nice. I mean, everything else was new, but <laughs> I was like, I got this bad graphics card lying around. Might as well put that in it. Yeah, no, for sure. 1080 is solid enough for a lot of stuff. Yeah, they yeah. just play like Fortnite and Minecraft and stuff, so it's fine. Oh, pfft. yeah, definitely. Although apparently Fortnite's been upping their graphical fidelity recently. Like, oh, really? Going for like photorealistic sunsets and stuff, and it's like, I wonder if that makes it tougher on the GPU or if they're just working within the existing bounds of the programming. I don't know. Don't know. Those developers working hard, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna introduce freaking Deku from My Hero Academia. Oh, really? Gotta get. Oh, yeah. Not even kidding. Gotta get Geralt of Rivia from The Witcher in there too. I knew, because, I knew that. You know, I knew that one was coming. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, ugh, who is not in Fortnite at this point? Is the question. I'm not. True. Autonomous. Neither am I. Raynor. Terrigan, but they're coming. Ooh, some, yeah, something StarCrafty's got to be coming, right? You would think, yeah. They're just gonna run out of like bigger names and have to <laughs> dump Kerrigan I mean, in there. Is Geralt really like a kid-friendly game? Because my assumption is that most no. of the people that play that game are like twelve-ish, right? Witcher three? No, no, no. Fortnite. <laughs> Fortnite. Oh yeah, for sure. No, 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 no. The Witcher games are violent and profane and like sex and nudity and like mm -hmm. gore and incredibly adult themes. Yeah, it's not for kids, no. Mm -hmm. But you know, Geralt smiles and he burns your enemies to death with fire and it's good. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Works out just fine, thanks. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Anywho, uh, StarCraft happened since the last time. Did it? What potted. happened? What, what, what did we get? What was it? <laughs> I've forgotten. Uh, there was the uh, Australia Rainer finals for what was it? Home Story Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When was that? Okay, that was a couple days ago. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm like... I, I just thought it was something Was bigger. I looking at the wrong page on Liquipedia? No, oh, Home Story. Oh, okay. So you just think Home Story Cup is I think I can, news. I think of Home Story Cup as like a fun community event. Sure. With... You know, elite players like Rainer and Classic and yeah. Clem and yes. Okay. Sure. But the prize pool is twenty six thousand dollars. <laughs> First place yeah. gets seven. It's not exactly like WCS kind of thing going on here. All right. No, 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 no. Oh, pop the cable out of your microphone again, didn't you? Can't hear a word you're saying, buddy. Today. Oh, there we go. Yeah, my mic, yeah, my cable is all glitchy. If I bump it, it's like, what? Huh? Where am I? And like disconnects and has to reconnect for a minute. Mm, fair enough. Anyway, um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of booze going on from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Historically, anyway. I don't know. I mean, we got Rainer versus Beyond. We got some Rainer versus Estrella stuff in here. Got Serral versus Beyond in the quarterfinals of the playoffs. Super cool stuff. Mm hmm. Ultra but fun. you're right. The prize pool is not huge, and this doesn't have any bearing on like whether you're a world champion or not. So, exactly. Also, like, there seems to be like a lot of really big players who are just missing. It's like, sure, we've got Beyond and Serral and Raynor. Where's Dark? What? Stats. Yeah. Well, Stats is military. Um, right. Stats is out. But Ty uh, just got is... just got his dismissal. No, not dismissal papers. That sounds bad. Uh, he just got <laughs> discharged. That's the word. <laughs> honorably discharged yeah mm -hmm. accurate yeah i mean i don't know i didn't expect him to be in this one but that would be cool for sure i don't know excuse me there 
Mm-hmm. Oh, look, I'm just I mean, saying these people are here of... for a good time. That's all. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. But yeah, the Rainer restoring a file, uh, final was, you know, about what you'd expect, a 3-1 by Rainer, but a couple of the games were pretty close. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. It's like the one game that Estrella won was the, you know, it's the classic Carrier, Void Ray, Tempest, High Templar, Immortal Archon, right? Where mm-hmm. it's just like the Zerg has to kind of poke and prod and can't really directly engage with it or they lose most of the time. And it's like, why do you do that every time? Like, why are you bothering with other strategies, man? And I don't know. Like, I get it. I get if it's every time that the Zerg player sees it coming, it's easier to deal with. But mm. yeah, it just seemed odd. And in one of the games that Rainer won, he made a ton of mutas and Astray didn't immediately just like toss down two Stargates and make a ton of Phoenix, which I thought was interesting. And he ended up in some base race scenario because oh. the mutas were obviously you know, I'm not going to engage with your Archon or Stalker army, so mm-hmm. you're going to go kill your buildings instead. So that was fun. It was exciting, but I was like, why did Estrella respond to this, like, not at all? <laughs> <laughs> why yeah. did he basically move it into a base race type thing? Anywho, yeah, Stray is a good player. You know, he can take maps off Rainer. He's not quite at the point where he can beat him, even in a, you know, less serious environment, but mm-hmm. I like him. But I mean, thinking of the run that Australia had just to get there, three one over Clem, three O over yeah. Zhaun, and three two against Beyond. That mm-hmm. kid's that kid's going places. No, absolutely for sure. He is what's his Oligulac ranking right now? Oh, it's gotta be high. Right? Recently, yeah. Like I was looking up Lambo the other day and I was really surprised that he was number twenty. Oh really? Mm-hmm. But according to Oligia Lacustrea is not in the top 10. He is 16. Wow. So yeah. that checks. Yeah, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Kind of ranked alongside Joan, Ragnarok, Gumio, Time, a laser, Showtime, players like yeah. that. I believe it. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> being the 16th best player in the world is pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's nothing to poo-poo. It's like, oh, he's only number 16 in the whole world. Ah, how lame. I was looking at this and I nearly freaked out because Raynor is ranked 32. But then I realized that's Raynor's <laughs> Protoss. Raynor's right. Protoss is ranked 32. <laughs> 30th in the world. Yeah. yeah that's Raynor. His Protoss is good. It's good. It's good stuff. Anywho, yeah, this is, this is fun. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is next? Katowice. Katowice. Oh, uh, yes. Katowice is coming. When mm-hmm. is it? Not until February. Ugh. All of like, January with no tournaments. What is this? Yeah. What like, are we going to talk about? I know, right? And talk about Brood War tournaments. You'd love to do that. Sure. Um, <laughs> was Stork in this one? <laughs> good good pull. <laughs> Great pull. Way to pull a StarCraft name out that isn't like Flash. That's right. what I'm impressed by. I mean, that was my first response. I'm like, no, no, no. I can't go with Flash. No, um, you can't. Uh, no, Stork was not involved in the most recent ASL. Uh, Beezer? Uh, Bisu was, yes. Mm-hmm. And he ended up taking third. Oh, good for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Old man Bisu still killing it out here. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I'm rapidly running out of plays. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to. <laughs> we don't have to go any further here. It's fine. Mm. I'm just impressed you pulled Stork out. That was nice. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, I, I've been watching StarCraft when Stork was playing StarCraft 2. So. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's not a good a point. point. A bunch of, yeah, a bunch of these players had their StarCraft 2 uh, dalliances. Mm-hmm. If you go back to the early StarCraft 2 cast on my channel, there's Flash in there. There's Jadong in there. Bisu's playing. Mm. Yeah. So. And then they went back to Brood War, but you know, for a while there, they were doing StarCraft two things. <laughs> it was it was nice, and mm-hmm. Blizzard was like, "Please stay, please stay in StarCraft two. And they were like, "No, no. Brood War is better." And they're like, oh, "Fine." Well, I don't know that Brood War was better, but they were better at Brood War than they were at StarCraft two. That's what mattered. Oh, interesting. Yeah, people yeah. go where they can earn money. Yeah. Once they got kicked out of the rest of the world and had to go back to Korea, I was like, well, shit. (laughs) (laughs) 
It is kind of fun finding old replays from StarCraft II pros that we know, like Parting and Stats, who were doing Brood War competitively Innovation. in the late 2000s. Yeah, yeah you know, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's always pretty fun to be like, okay, nobody knew who's, knows who this is in Brood War, but they're big StarCraft II names. So, right. yeah, some people are just better in certain versions of StarCraft than others. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's very true. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right, uh, Chainsaw Man's. Yeah, Chainsaw Man. I watched the episode. Um, finally found out who the dancing guy in the intro theme is. Like, the dancing creature. It's the future devil. Ah. Yep, he's in there. He's doing some, like, dancing. But it's like when Denji's taking the rainbow colored snail from Makima. So it's like a psychedelic trip, but future devils in there. Yep. Oh, okay. I'll have to look closer. I never noticed that. Mm -hmm. My brain's just like psychedelic colors and patterns. And then it moves right. on real fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like the attitude of future devil. He's just like kind of chill and like humming songs to himself. <laughs> like you're expecting, I don't know, you're expecting devils to be like serious all the time. But this dude's just like cool. I mean, I guess it makes when me you wonder why he's locked up. I mean, yeah. Uh, like, yeah. obviously, he can control himself to the point where he doesn't murder everyone they send into the cell. Right. <laughs> anyway. Um, all I can guess is that, like, he can see the future. And when you see the future, you know everything that's going to happen. You're just alone for the ride. Like, you just enjoy everything because, like, nothing's a surprise. And you don't feel the need to, like, involve yourself necessarily. But if someone comes in seeking your power, you're willing to give it, I guess. Apparently. Does but, he take anything from Aki? No. So he's just like so thrilled with how awesome Aki's death is going to be that he's like, let's do this thing. Yes. Okay. He, that's he just wants to see it for himself. <laughs> yeah. I like how he's like, I'll tell you how you die. It's this. And Aki's like, ah, I don't want to know. It's like, ah. <laughs> Uh, you're you're talking to the viewers. You don't want us yeah. to know is what it is. You don't want to spoil it, buddy. Mm. <laughs> no. Yeah, so he's just in his right eye now and gives him like a tiny bit of precog precognizant I, capabilities, I guess. I, guess. I, guess. Yeah. I was far more interested to learn that the snake demon, snake devil, the things that it bites and eats and like it holds in its mouth and keeps that. Like the ghost de devil was still in its mouth from the other day, which... And willing to take orders. Yeah, I guess. It's like, you ate me, and I've been trapped in this snake body, and I come out, and you tell me to kill a person, I'll do it, no problem. It's like, why? I don't know. That's all. Three days of torture, and the demons give up. Like, that's an established... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, no. No, that's fair. Mm -hmm. I get that. Yeah. So they're just, like, making them more malleable to commands, and then mm -hmm. when they come out, they're just like, fine. Do what mm -hmm. you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, narratively, everything that's happened over this episode and the last episode is Aki nearly dies from a terrorist attack. They give him a new weapon in the form of the future de devil, and then they're like, "All right, go have go attack him again." Like, let's just resume that fight. Yeah, this is just it was a quick timeout. It was like a thirty second timeout, <laughs> and we're going forward again now. I appreciate it. We're moving. Mm. There's not a lot of sitting around talking about what happened. It's time to go. Yeah. Well, I mean, Makima is investigating Yakuza families, I guess. Yeah. Ripping out their <laughs> eyes. <laughs> and just, she is the scariest person in this whole show. Mm -hmm. Just like that smile the whole time. Like, I've removed the eyes from your loved ones. Here they are in this sack. We can put them back if you do what we want. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, lady! Yeah, and she uh, explodes that guy's brain or whatever she does, smiling the whole time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, she's the scariest. 100%. So when okay, so when she's talking to the yakuza guys and she makes the guy's nose bleed and then he falls down. Yeah, but then at the right on like the the hotel or building or whatever it is with the basement full of zombies. Yeah, people there, their nose starts bleeding and they fall over dead when they were like pointing guns at Aki. Is she doing that from there? Yeah, because she's asking for the names of everybody in the organizations. 
Mm -hmm. And it's fairly heavily implied they give them to her because otherwise she will kill them all. Right. So mm -hmm. she has the name. She just starts going through the list. Bam, bam, bam. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. I mean, it's very nice of her to get to the four that are pointing guns at Aki but, uh, at the end at the same but, time there. But she can do this like stare tactic that kills them over yeah. an incredible dis distance. But she needed prisoners to like explode people. Why didn't she do this the first time? Yeah, I don't know. It, okay, cool. And, well, initially what I thought was you have to, if you're in, you know, immediate contact mm. with someone, you can explode their brain. She can. But if you don't know where they are and you have their name, you can do it at the cost of another life. I thought that's what it was. The extra distance requires you to sacrifice something. Right. But, but then she, she was doing it to the four <laughs> gunmen who were pointing them at Aki at the end and she's not in the room. Right. And also, they're not exploding. Moving. That's a different thing. Yeah. They don't have holes bored through their bodies either, like on the train. She just has like eight different powers, powers. going on. Like I said, she's scary. Uh huh. Yeah, that's that's an excellent. I didn't even think about that. Why does she, like. <laughs> is it just a question of preference? She's like, today I feel like boring a hole through the bodies of my enemies to kill them. And to the and the next day, I'll feel like a, you know make, giving them a brain bleed, giving them an aneurysm, and then they just die real quick. I mean, maybe. Why? So, is Malkima human? <laughs> because she's got the crazy eyes, like every other devil does. Like yeah. Awachan has different eyes. She has Malkima has different eyes. So, is she human or is she a fiend? Because if she's human, I assume she just has like a ton of contracts with devils, and by mixing up the what skill she uses, people like she's leaving people to keep guessing what actual contract she has. But if her if she's a fiend, yeah. those are just all her powers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and they say usually when a human when a fiend is made, the fiend is less powerful than the devil. Right. So if she's a fiend, like, what <laughs> devil is she, and how is it more powerful than what she is now? She's the fiend of the devil devils. The fear <laughs> of devils. <laughs> the, dev the devil devil sounds pretty powerful. That's fair. Yeah. But she doesn't have the horns on her head. I, I don't know. You don't necessarily have to have horns on your head. Like, the angel devil doesn't have horns. It's got a halo, but it doesn't have horns. Is she a fiend? Mm -hmm. She's just yeah, an I, angel devil. Oh, I, I assumed they were all fiends. The people that were shown in like, the montage fight in the zombie basement. I assume yeah, those were all fiends. Like, like they shark were, guy. The shark guy's a fiend. The violence fiend is a fiend. Yeah. Uh, and there's something going on with his mask. Like if it comes off, he goes berserk or something. Um, yeah. I think they're keeping him passive by gassing him. Mm-hmm. He just goes utterly bonkers if he's not being kept down, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, spider lady was real scary. Yep. Yeah. A lot of legs. Yeah. Uh, not, good. Not, not great, Bob. Not great. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't I mean, know. Uh, no. <laughs> because, like, in the... Two episodes ago or whatever, when Makama's using the prisoners to explode the dudes, mm -hmm. Hoodie Girl knows it's Makama. She's like, that's a Makama power. Shit. Right. Right? <laughs> so at least she's aware of, very specifically aware of one thing that Makama can do. It's a very mm -hmm. specific calling card. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Maybe there's other stuff that she can do that nobody, nobody has all the pieces, you know? Mm. Yeah, Don't know. Don't um uh alcoholic trainer sensei dude he's yeah. on to makima being like you're full of shit like he's like you're a liar why yeah. are you really doing this you knew that they were coming for you and she was like i got attacked myself you remember which yeah she doesn't answer the question <laughs> right he asked her a couple times like well, did you know and she's like I'm doing everything I do is for the greater good smile <laughs> <laughs> And so he accepts that, right? He's like, well, as long as you're working for the good of humanity, cool, cool. I guess. Yeah, I'll yeah. allow it. <laughs> like, allowing a massive attack to come upon all of these devil hunters really sucks. But if it's in the service of the winning of the eventual war, then 
Mm. Okay. Like it's kind of like when the allies in world war two cracked the Germans code. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that they found out was there was an attack coming onto a town and they made the decision to let it happen because if they stopped it, there'd be no conceivable way for the Germans to explain it away other than their code was broken. Right. So for the betterment of the rest of the war, they let all these people die. So it's like, this is a thing. Mm-hmm. This is a thing that people do. Yeah. That, that necessary evil talk she was having with the, uh, the mobsters, mm-hmm. which the mobsters refer to the other gangs. Um, he, he like lists the other countries, China and Russia. Yeah. He says the Soviets. Oh, does he say Soviet there? He says Soviet. Oh. What's up with that? <laughs> Do we have internet in this world? Um, They have cell phones because they call each other, don't they? Oh, that's true. Yeah, so cell phones post-date the fall of the Soviet Union. But like smartphones. And smartphones, especially. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm saying like cell phone. Like, and there were like really expensive big brick cell phones that people had in the mm-hmm. early to mid 80s, but those were very rare. Mm-hmm. By the time they're just ubiquitous, the Soviet Union is gone. Right. So this is alternate history, alternate universe type stuff then. Yeah. This isn't our, our world at all, if that's the case. Nice. Yeah. What are the odds of it being like a bad translation? (laughs) Just someone in the (laughs) subtitles was like, hmm, Russia's not looking so hot. We should plan for the future and just call them the the Soviets just in case they regress. (laughs) (laughs) That would be funny. Just some rogue translator being like, yeah, we're going to do this. Uh, I put the the odds pretty low on that, but... um... (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's more likely the Soviet Union to still exists in their world. There's enough differences anyway that it's not going to be have our history exactly. No. Yeah. <laughs> I just continue to love the Denji power relationship. Like they're <laughs> standing outside ready to go into the hotel where all the bad guys are. And they're like, this is awesome. We're ready. Mm-hmm. Our minds are honed. Hone. We're sharp. Yeah. Let's go. And Kobe's like, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, poor, poor Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> and even alcoholic sensei guys, like, I'm sick of these dudes. Like, they are so annoying. Well, he's. I thought, it'd be, I thought it'd be fun to break my toys over and over again, but not as much. I'm getting attached to them. But also, like, right. we're done. He's yeah. sick of them because he's starting to like them. <laughs> like, yeah. Which, you know, that's sad. He's drinking to forget the fact that people like him and he likes people. It's, yeah. He's kind of sad. And that, yeah, and he's a survivor. So, I mean, yeah, how many people has he trained that have died? Hundreds? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, he, he also seems oddly, like, dispassionate about, like, Makimoto being like, you can kill all the people I train. That's fine. But it has to be in service to humanity. Right? Like, he right. kind of doesn't care about all the rest, it seems like. Like, he knows he's making disposable tools at best. Well, he has to. The the death rate of devil hunters is through the roof. Right. (laughs) The graveyard is huge. Yeah, he can't be like, keep them alive, because he knows that's impossible. Mm -hmm. So the best compromise he can come to with himself and his own morality is, well, at least our deaths will be meaningless. And they're going to be working towards some greater good, which is the eradication of these devils, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of feel like here's a thought that I just had. I feel Mm -hmm. like there should be more examples of the devils like harming random innocents, right? Mm. We don't really have that. Like bats hanging out in a house Mm -hmm. and like the attack, the gun devil is only seems to be attacking devil hunters, right? right? Um, did the eternity demon devil, um, kill any of the people in its hotel that it took they don't say anything about it maybe did the sea cucumber devil kill anyone before power the got to it? sea cucumber devil was like 
standing outside a phone booth <laughs> sitting there. It didn't seem all that threatening. I don't know. I think we've got a men in black situation where that dude just came out of making a phone call and power started <laughs> shooting at him. <laughs> right? Like someone needs to be the Will Smith here and realize that not all devils are evil. And he just making a phone call, hanging out with some tissues, doing some pull ups on a street lamp. Yeah. I guess. Okay. We, okay. Hang on. We do have the gun devil blown away Aki's house. Yes. With his family inside. At least we're pretty sure that's the gun devil. He didn't really see anything, right? Uh, yeah. The zombie devil made a bunch of zombies, which is still a problem to this day, apparently. In spite of being yeah. six months or something. Yeah, no uh, kidding. But I just, I don't know. I just, I'd like more examples of, oh no, there's a devil terrorizing downtown Tokyo. Mm. Let's go stop them. Instead of, it always seems like they're direct engagements either the devil hunters are directly attacking the devils or the devils are coming directly after the devil hunters the 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 okay so when aki first met denji he took him he's like hey we're gonna like go kill a fiend and he's like here's an axe use this and that that was a fiend that had spawned in like someone's house and took over like the dad and the dad had killed his own family oh that's a good one yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, I want more of that. Oh, Not yeah. That it's no. never been shown, but just, no, no. just more. Just more. Yeah, a little more often. Because I forget. <laughs> it just <laughs> seems like the devils are minding their own business and they're only defending themselves. But that's not true. I just, mm -hmm. I just like them to be causing random havoc more often. Mm -hmm. I want that's more all. Meowie. That's all I want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What the heck is Meowie? <laughs> this random cat just left in the apartment. <laughs> Oh, Meow. Actually, Meow is having a great time. Meow is no longer in captive captivity for Bat Devil, so mm -hmm. Meow is great, actually. Yeah. How yeah. long did like Bat Devil would have had to have fed the cat, right? <laughs> like Powell wasn't like gone for a day and came back with Denji. It feels like it's not that long of a time. Right? Yeah. I mean it's I think it's meant to feel like it's not that long of a time, but it feels like it should have been. <laughs> So basically, power is like, I need a human to trade for my cat. Mm -hmm. So is she wandering around looking for a human when Makama catches her? Or is she like, if I join the devil hunters, it's easier for me to find someone to trick, right? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I'm trying to understand power's thought processes is not, <laughs> You're trying to understand not a power's good course thought. of action. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 don't do that. No. You will get I'm... nowhere fast. I'm willing to bet she was wandering around town looking for someone to kidnap and mm. Makama found her and was like, hey, you there, fiend, right? Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Anywho, so, uh, I like up? that Aki's... No, go ahead. Oh, what's up with the gun devil needing money? Like, yeah. Is, is the gun devil just an arms dealer? It's like, oh, if you give me 20 grand, I'll give you a bunch of guns and some ammo and stuff. It's like... <laughs> The gun devil's trying to retire in the Bahamas. <laughs> the gun devil's just Lockheed Martin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I like that in universe, the people that were like, wait, what? <laughs> he's asking for money? What the crap? Yeah. yeah, it just seems like he's a regular gun dealer. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Especially since we're showing that like, he's basically just giving out pistols. Like, he's not it doesn't seem like it's overly specialized hardware, if you know what I mean. Like, it feels like it's very basic equipment, which, yeah, that, that could be like, there could be some like well building choice in that. And like, I don't know, but it feels like if you're the gun devil and you're making a deal with this person, like, you would want something a little more fancy. Yeah. 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 Like, could I get, I don't know, or do you do rocket launchers, gun devil? <laughs> <laughs> right. Can I get a P90? I don't know. Sure. Yeah, anything. Mm. I don't know. Sniper rifle would be real handy, yeah. I bet. Some anti-material rifles. That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no, it's just old pistols. And like, I think we saw an Uzi. <laughs> sure. From like one of the four dudes who gets their brain melted in the hallway. Right. Yeah. Which an yeah. Uzi is a machine pistol. So I'm at the same time. Um, yes. Sure. Why not? Why not? Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What's up? Yeah. Why does he need money? <laughs> or is he just like the middleman for an actual arms deal? <laughs> like, he has to go and pay for the guns. 
<sighs> yeah, it makes no sense at all. Yeah. I mean, I did like, uh, thank, God oh, we don't really, thank God we don't only have one episode left in the season to explain it all. Is that true? We only have one? I think we're doing 12 episode seasons, yeah. Aw, that sucks. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on that. Don't hold me to it. Chainsaw Man and Umi. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it says aired October twelfth to December twenty eighth. So next season, next episode will be the last one. All right. Well, season. fine. Fine, fine, fine. Anyway, what did you really I, like? Yeah, I just so Aki has this again, kind of this precog ability to see a little bit ahead in the future, which helps him fighting Ghost Devil. Mm-hmm. But it's not. Like, it makes him faster or stronger or smarter at all, right? It makes him a better fighter, but he still loses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they got him a different sword, because the other one was more of like a needle, like a spike. This one's like an actual blade. Yeah, this, and this so, one's not counting either, so... Like, yeah. so this this one, yeah, this one, like, wow, he's drawing the curse sword immediately? That's... And then I'm like, oh, no, never mind. Right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's a different one. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Anywho. Yeah, I think that's about it for the Chainsaw Man. I think that's about it for it as well. I still feel like I'd like Denji to develop the skills to be Chainsaw Man without losing copious amounts of blood. I feel like that would be more useful than teaching him how to use an axe. Well, yeah. how, what skill to not lose copious amount of blood do you have when your arms get splayed by chainsaws? And so does your face. Like, what do you, how do you prevent that? Can we give him a camelback that's just full of blood? blood. Right? <laughs> Could we put him in a bubble so when he transforms, all the blood just seeps to the bottom and he licks that up first thing and then gets to it? Um, yeah. Yeah. He just recycles his own blood and he's good for a while. And then the, he goes to the camelback for stage two. I'm just saying, I have some ideas here of how to make Chainsaw Man as Chainsaw Man way more effective and not have to be stupid boring denji with an axe i didn't come to this for denji with an axe i came to this for chainsaw man mm. yeah i That's mean I don't, I don't know if they don't figure that out eventually i'm gonna be really mad because it seems really simple uh, like it, all sensei teacher did when he first starts training him is like drop some blood from a bag into his mouth and he's like i'm good <laughs> it's like so it doesn't take a lot <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know. I'm glad I have that figured out. Give I'll him see. a give him a support squad of like SWAT snipers who just have like blood paintballs that they shoot into his mouth <laughs> whenever yeah. he gets hurt. Just like pop, pop, pop. Healing packs. Go, go, go. That sounds more difficult than my idea, but <laughs> more fun. But you can do it from distance. They don't have to get involved, right? Like, and if it's just like a camel pack, it doesn't get shredded by whatever it is that picks him up or swallows him. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just planning ahead. Right. Let's just have some foresight, people. That's all we got to do. <sighs> Good stuff. Something tells me they will do neither of those. Really? Yeah. I don't, They're just going to go with the Chainsaw Man has a massive weakness. Yeah. The whole rest of the series that we're not going to try to address. Characters should have weaknesses. He, well, yeah. He <laughs> didn't. He didn't defeat what's her face when he was fighting Bat, and then like Leech Devil showed up. What was her name? Defeat the Bat. So he's fighting the Bat, that, and he's kicking and then, Bat's ass, and then another Devil shows up, and she's like, "Hey, I'm Matt's my husband." Leech. Yeah, you just said it. It is Leech. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, sorry. I wasn't sure it was Leech. No, Leech no, no. is beating. Leech is beating him. Yeah. Even when he's all chainsaw So he's not impossible to beat unless he has this weakness. It's just a weakness that makes him worse than he needs to be and is easily fixable. That's all I'm saying. Mm, I don't think it's easily fixable. I think all of the designs that you have to like equip him with are fragile and easily broken in the style of combat that he employs, which is sure. hand to hand. Right? Like yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's it. So you have the camelback and it works. But if you want to ratchet up the stakes, Oh no, they hit the camelback and it exploded. He doesn't have any blood anymore. Crap, right? 
You can do it. It's... I mean, how is that? How is that really any different to being like, okay, this fight's been going on for a while. Denji's chainsaws is starting to get a little smaller. He's running low on blood. How is yeah. that like? It's mechanically different in that uh, they have to destroy his backpack versus this fight's been going on a while. But the it stakes would, still go up. It would show me that they give a crap about this weakness he has, and they're trying to fix it. That's all I want. Mm. That's all I ask for. They're just accepting this is a thing, and so we have to get stupid axe Denji. It's lame. I'm like, let Chainsaw Man go against a bunch of zombies. That'd be fun. Look, you don't want everyone to know who Chainsaw Man is all the time. Tenji needs well, to be able to fight without the chainsaws. Who are we trying to keep this information from? The Gun Devil? Because everyone the Gun Devil works for knows who he is. Right, but and what they if call there him are a piece other of people? shit. <laughs> they do. But, like, what about other threats that might be out there? Sure, worse ones than the Gun Devil. Why not? Like well, yeah. they don't have to be worse, yeah. just other bad, bad threats, bad people. We want to take advantage of him, and just yeah. for some reason. Yeah, whatever. Mm. I'm just saying, I'd like them to try to address the weaknesses that exist with Chainsaw Man. <laughs> Done. Yeah. You can want that. That's fine. Okay, great. Okay. Appreciate. Your permission on that one. <laughs> I'll send a letter to the author. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So what else? Uh, Man, so I'm still watching that Money Heist show. The that's Spanish not one. good. The, the not so, good Spanish movie. TV. <sighs> so it's good. Like the acting is really good and the special effects and just the sets they're building and Everything they're doing is great, but they're just so intent on doing the same thing they did in season one, and it's driving me crazy. So just real quick, in season one, the negotiator that the cops have to work with these people who have hostages inside of the Mint, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. She ends up finding where the brain of all this is. He's been working outside of the Mint coordinating mm. everything she finds him mm. gets him at gunpoint has him tied up in chains this is a negotiator yep the she's a cop with, well, okay so the person working with the police and is a yeah. cop has yeah. tied someone up and is interrogating them mm -hmm. okay it's and the same page. yep and he Man, this is more complicated than I thought it was. So, <laughs> earlier on in the season, he he con <clears throat> he arranges to meet her in a cafe that she frequents, mm. and is like charming and stuff. And so she falls in love with him, not knowing who he is. Okay. So then she finds out who he is and she hunts him down and she finds it and she's got him tied up and she's like, we're going to arrest you. And he manages to like turn this into getting her to flip sides. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. So she becomes, she becomes part of this gang and part of the heist. Okay. So it's like, wow, like <laughs> that probably shouldn't work at all, but all right, fine. I'll allow it this one time. And in season two, we, the, not the exact same thing happens, but a very similar thing happens where the negotiator again, mm -hmm. who's brought in, mm -hmm. she discovers where he is. I'm like, first of all, you need better operational security, my guy. <laughs> you keep getting discovered and put at gunpoint. You need like, I don't know, a door that locks. That'd be useful. I don't right. I'm really confused by this whole thing. And he again flips her -er to being on their side. And it's like, okay. All right, TV show. Are we just entirely out of ideas? Is all we can do play the exact same hits that we did in season one that were, you know, pretty good and just repeats? Uh, it, yeah. That's boggling my do. mind. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So it bugs uh, me because, like, I kind of want to recommend it, but then season two is like just retreading all the same things. I can't bother can't me it. so much. You no. Can't do it. Yeah, that's Money Heist. That's my review. Well, Just watch I, season one if you want to watch it. Maybe I will watch it because I've been watching um, Friendly Space Ninja who does the like... Yeah. 
I love Friendly Space Ninja. Yeah, he does a bunch of um, like what do you call them? Like video documentaries, video analysis. Yeah, analysis. The video like pop culture. Video yeah, essays. pop cu- cultural analysis essays. Yeah, yeah of yeah, yeah. Uh, TV shows that are usually not very good. So. <laughs> yeah, I watched a two-hour takedown of Riverdale. Oh, Riverdale. Yeah, I have not watched a single second of Riverdale. Neither I. Okay, I rewatched that yesterday. It's so good. <laughs> it is so good. <laughs> yeah, I like Friendly Space Ninja a lot. Yeah, and so I mean, it's put me in the mood to watch bad TV, essentially. <laughs> so maybe I will watch this. Maybe. Okay, I'm just saying. I think season one is legitimately good. I think two okay. is where it falls off the rails for really fixable reasons. I don't. Whatever. Yeah. One thing I really like about uh, Money Heist is they put themselves two characters in situations where one wants to get an emotional rise out of another one. Mm. Like someone's in cover and you want to piss them off. So they'll come out of cover and try to shoot you. Right. Right. And when they write these exchanges, they're really good Mm. because it uses legitimate, like this would hurt people examples. Instead of just being like, just generic. Like you suck. You're a coward. Like what? You know, like stuff that doesn't, Okay, so there's um the head of security gets caught in mm-hmm. the heist, and so he's a hostage. Um, he is forced under threat to his wife and kid to trick the outside cops into whatever into helping the robbers in some way, right? Sure. So he also manages to escape and then he volunteers to come back in to the bank as part of an intervention later. Okay. So we find ourselves in that situation where this dude is back inside the bank and he's in cover Mm -hmm. and this character is trying to get him to come out of cover to start talking about how, you know, you probably told yourself and everybody else that the reason you wanted to come back in here is for duty and for your country. But the real reason that you did it was because you feel like a traitor. Like you helped us and you can't even face your kid. You can't face your wife. I bet you didn't even go home. I bet you couldn't look them in the eye. Right. Okay. Because you feel, you feel like such a, you know, like such a piece of shit that you'd rather come back in here and die potentially Mm. than face your family again. And I was just like, that's pretty good. Yeah. And they yeah. do a bunch of that. And I always appreciate it. They put more effort into that, those situations than anything else. Fair enough. Yeah. And does it work to get a rise out of him? Spoilers. Mm-hmm. Sure did. Cool. Good, 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 good. Mm-hmm. I've been listening to a lot of Warhammer books. Um, so the Horus Heresy series, which is like 60 books long, ends with another series called The Siege of Terror. Um, so they finished one sixty book season with another uh, series of who knows how many books. I think it's like seven or eight so far, with more coming. Yo, okay. Um, but there was um, a, a, like a joke is rare in forty k. Like, there's not a lot of yeah. things that come off as funny. Um, right. but in the middle of uh the siege, like. Terra's been under siege for a while. There's all these broken regiments of just like regular guardsmen who were like either conscripts or volunteers or were just guardsmen before the siege started. But they all introduce themselves with their name and their regiment every time. It's all they have left to them is like that their name has become this like sentence where I'm like, I you know, it's I'm Luke Hefley of the 12th Pan Pack defenders from the Gadaba planes or something right yeah and the the, so they're talking back and forth and these characters and the because i'm listening to an audiobook the narrator saying it every time and one of the guys goes to like check in with his new regimental commander and says it to him and the commander starts saying it back he's like wait wait, what the fuck's wrong with you like (laughs) he doesn't recognize it's not and it's rare and so rare to have a funny joke (laughs) Wow, it took me so off guard. No, not wrong. Every Warhammer book I've read is very serious all the time. It's true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I enjoyed that thoroughly. Um, 
uh, the bad things then end up happening to these characters though because it is Warhammer. Because it is Warhammer. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 So true facts. True facts. Mm-hmm. Mm. Whew, thoroughly Mob enjoying Psycho it. continues to be pretty good. Oh, Mob Psycho is still going? Hasn't yeah. Finished? I don't think so. No. I mean, no, because there was a new episode today. Definitely not over. Well, I mean, it's probably only got 12 episodes, doesn't it? Probably. So it's nearly finished. Yeah. So it's just kind of exploring this concept of there's Mob, and then there's like this Esper version of Mob that's like the most powerful Esper on Earth and no one can defeat it. Mm-hmm. And the question is, is this part of Mob? Is this a separate entity that's kind of possessing him? Mm. Can they be separated? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because basically we get some internal monologues from Mob's brother where he's like, okay, Mob, when he was younger, he used to use his powers a bunch. Yeah. Just for fun, just to play, right? Mm -hmm. And then he realized it was dangerous and he stopped using them at all. Hmm. And that's, he says, that's when we started seeing, you know, mob hit 100% and the Esper comes out. It kicks everyone's ass. Right. So he thinks it's because mob's been suppressing his powers. It's created this unhealthy, suppressed version of personification of his Mm -hmm. ability Mm -hmm. that escapes Mm -hmm. every once in a while when mob stress gets too high. Right. Yeah. So it's inter- it's interesting. We show Mob. He's kind of trapped inside the Esper right now. The Esper is in full control, and mm-hmm. he tries to talk with it. And the Esper considers himself Mob. Mm. Right. This is me. This is who I am. You right. think you're the real you, and I think I'm the real me. So we're at an impasse here, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's good. It's been kind of fun. It's been running through past uh, telekinetics that he's fought with in the past and or become friends with in the past and they try to stop him and nobody can. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Reagan's coming and Reagan's going to make everything fine because that guy's a blowhard, but he's a good dude and he always fixes problems. Oh, good. I hope he gets fixed. Mm-hmm. Uh, It'd be nice. Yeah, it would be nice. Uh, Mob needs a win. <laughs> <laughs> like He goes through a lot, that poor kid. And... He really needs to deal with it in some healthy ways. Uh, is he still in the, like the body improvement club? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're the best. <laughs> well, they show up. So Mob's okay. this like scary looking. His hair is floating. All this like energy is coming off him. Mm-hmm. And he has like no irises. It's just like these blank white eyes. And they're like, mm-hmm. Mob, come on. Like we're oh, he must be sleepwalking. We gotta protect him until he wakes up. This is just like the most <laughs> heartwarming, wholesome dudes ever. Mm-hmm. They get yeah, to that great. situation and they're like, we need to do what's right here. <laughs> He's clearly yeah. just sleepwalking. We need to like protect him. Make sure he yep. doesn't bump into anyone or cross the road without looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, they're that's hilarious. Good. That's love nice those guys. Good. Body improvement club, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. all that's really going on. Mm-hmm. Trying to think. Yeah. Is it the yeah. uh, Activision Blizzard president is leaving to go be like COO of the Bored Apes Yacht Club NFT thing? I did see that <laughs> and I was like, timing, my guy. <laughs> Like, now you want to do this? <laughs> yeah, it seems uh, a bit rough. Um, <laughs> like, like that whole board Ape NFT thing absolutely collapsed. Like, did it, I, I mean, I assume it did, like most NFT like things. Months ago? Yeah. And so he, like, it collapses and he waits six months and then he's like, it's time. <laughs> <laughs> I can salvage this, guys. Don't worry. Look how well I've been running Blizzard. <laughs> right. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm gonna go see if I can buy one real quick. How much are oh, they're all in Ethereum? I don't know how much Ethereum is right now. Uh, Google will tell you how much an Ethereum is. H two USD. One Ethereum is a thousand dollars. Okay, fine. That's easy enough. Okay, so there are still board apes you can buy for like seven hundred thousand dollars out here. That's 
Wow. Rad. Yeah. Why? Uh, Because people think they're worth money. Do they? Do they now? Well, whoever's selling them has the price listed at $700,000, right? Right. And I did, like, do they list recent sales? I bet they don't. Oh, Oh, no. I mean, you, you can look at the wallet that's holding it and then look at other sales right this is a long oh, yeah. chain no here we go yeah so actually on the OpenSea website it has a list of recent sales so this one yeah somebody sold this one for eighty one thousand dollars this one for seventy eight thousand dollars yeah but i mean there's still there's still the the issue of are those legitimate sales they haven't just sold it to themselves like True. for another wallet they own to be like, no, seriously, look, someone will pay that much for it. You should totally buy it. It's an excellent point. Yep. Don't know. Could easily be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I can tell you that I don't see anyone talking about it on like Reddit or Twitter or anything anymore. So right. I'd be surprised if it still had a healthy market going on. I very much doubt that it does. <laughs> Yeah. I would be surprised to learn that it's got a healthy market. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Who was trying to make me suggesting that I get an NFT profile portrait the other day? And I was like, no. Mm, I don't know. I didn't see that. I know. Was it Twitter was like, do this thing? Mm. Might have been Twitter's Twitter. like, sign up for Twitter Blur right now. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I see. I, th- I think it was Twitter, because like you can, you've always been able to do that. People have had um, an NFT as their profile picture for a while now, and I've always sure. been like, Meh. but this was Twitter being like, "Hey, you can set up an NFT as their profile picture," and I was like, "What? Why are you suggesting this? Go away!" <laughs> well, they need to find some uses for these things, otherwise, people will realize <laughs> that it's speculative. <laughs> <I'm not> actually. <laughs> A product um yeah I, I mean i don't know why you would do that no i mean right click save is a thing so yeah again nfts seem kind of stupid yeah well, i mean the jpeg of an ape version of it sure but again i do think the technology will be used for proof of ownership for things like houses and stuff in the future so uh, I mean, I think it could. I don't think it will. I mean, I have no doubt that you could say that you could put that information on the blockchain. I have no doubt that it can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't think uh, there's, there's security in doing that. I don't think there's a reasonable benefit. Like, there was all those stories of like people who had nfts and then people just dropped other nfts into their wallets because you can send anyone anything and the moment they clicked on them to see what they were or to delete them well you can't actually delete them you have to send them to somewhere else that gave them access to that person's wallet and they just took everything so imagine someone just sending you a bunch of photos to your wallet and then now they own your house right like that sounds awful (laughs) sure does so uh i think the technology maybe needs some iterations, maybe some improvements before people put anything of real value. Not that, you know, artwork that's apparently being sold for $800,000 isn't real value, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, what's anything really worth? It's what somebody will pay for it, always. True. Yeah. <sighs> well, that's that, I guess. Yeah, that's that. All right, let's wrap it up then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is time to go. Thanks for hanging out with us for another edition of the Falcon Paladin Hour with Somicron at twitch.tv slash Somicron. Hey, look at that. You can also support us if you want at patreon.com slash Somicron and by going to falconpaladin.store and buying some merch. Mm -hmm. Yep. The VODs get uploaded to YouTube over on Somicron's YouTube channel. Sometimes they get posted to podcast uh, feeds every once in a while. Every, every few months, one comes out, yeah. Yeah, every once in a while I might be overselling it. <laughs> <laughs> the last one was in August. That wasn't that long ago. <laughs> Look, I've True. Been busy, I've been busy doing nothing, okay? 
Yeah, no, I get it. Doing yeah. nothing takes a lot of effort. I understand. It's true. So yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for listening. And until next time, as always, you take care of yourself.